Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, as you can see, I went ahead and already filled the line art. I also fixed it a little bit. So, today we're just going to focus on the ray scale. So, same drill as always. Water fringe. No, I don't call it water fringe. Probably two. Let's see. Now, I'm going to have to be a little creative with anatomy here because <laughs> this is a strange, strange view. Let's see what happens. Something. Well, the light is, hmm, usually I try to think about a, an event lighting for these because I don't know, since they're for monster packs, I don't know where they're going to be used. So, um, if I choose a specific lighting, that might clash with the person's uh, battle background, and I don't want that. So I try to stay as generic as possible. But as a general rule, uh, top to bottom. So things at the bottom get darker, unless there's something that's lighting up from the bottom, like um, portal or lightning, anything like that. This is probably gonna be in the shadow. Also, because they add that um, sort of rim light at the end, um, I tend to want some lighting come through from the back. I want to leave this dark for now, and then later I'll do something if it needs. Any correction? Stringy hair, stringy zombie hair. It's inside the mouth technically, so it's gonna have to be Dark, this is dark, all dark. This is dark. There's a little edge here. I just gonna make it I'm gonna get dark. This part well this is this is, I guess, where it kind of merges. I want to, um, no, I actually forgot to simplify the liner a little bit. So I'm going to do it now. It doesn't really matter when I do it, because I can also do it later. The inner details may have to be subdued just a little bit. This is technically no, this is different. Hmm. What am I do with this passage is basically adjusting the line weight. Something like that for now. All of these little dots and facts, all of this thing in the middle of the sail is gonna have to go. Well, not completely, but oh, because otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna pop forward, basically. Where you have a thicker line, technically, the thing is a little more separated from the background. 
or from whatever there is behind it. So I'm going to avoid having <clears throat> technically thinner and secondary things. I want to avoid them uh, to look like they, they pop. They're too important. Get some splashy shapes here. I thought I could have done this before as well. I'm getting so much into Final Fantasy things again. <clears throat> Recently I've been watching some um, one specific Let's Play of Final Fantasy VIII. And uh, it kind of makes me want to draw summons monsters, but also specifically summons. I might do it actually. At some point I might do a compilation of Final Fantasy summons. Maybe from Final Fantasy 3, that's where they introduced them the first time. Let's see. That's a lot of work though, because I'm very slow. So, it would take... Eh, even if it's just 10, that would take me two minutes. <laughs> At this rate. <laughs> Considering you also have work to work on. Like paint work. Hey Chase, sounds would take forever. Yeah. But still, the idea is tickling me. <laughs> I just cannot use them for any. I cannot sell them, obviously, because it's not my original idea. I could give them away for free, itch maybe. So I would like to see your Bahamut. Oh yeah. Yeah, before I played Final Fantasy VIII, Bahamut was my favorite song. Then it became Diablos or Diablos. Just the sheer design. Um, it's so cool and spiky. <laughs> it's kind of my stuff. Bahamut would take ugh, a month. I don't know, especially if I try to make one of those Final Fantasy VII Bahamuts. Um, Neo Bahamut. And the other, I forgot the name. Uh, remember the Ocean Glider? I don't remember the ocean glider. Oh uh, wait, I might actually remember it. But I went, I went back and looked at Morfello anyway. So I remember that at least now, and the fire Velociraptor. Few actually, a few. I remember a lot of them. Not so much the glider. Can you base that on uh, that off of Quetzalcoatl from Final Fantasy VIII? Uh, I think I might remember uh, the one you mean. Final Fantasy VIII it has, it has a slightly, slightly different design compared to the others. I wouldn't call it realistic, but it was a little more tough. It was a little more tough compared to the usual. Final Fantasy stuff. Especially some of the monsters like the... Uh, what's they called? Anacondor, Sor, Anacondor, maybe? Uh, the, the one that looks like a um, basilisk, basically. The glider was the big blue snake-like thing with wings. Okay, I have a vague image in my head. I'm gonna have to look it up again later. I can check the, the files you sent. I've got them all saved anyway. 
See, I would like, it's funny because I would like to draw all that stuff. Like I am dying to draw all that stuff, but I'm so slow. So I don't get tired. I don't get tired about drawing those. You got mixed feelings about Final Fantasy VIII. Me too, but mostly about the story, honestly, um, because I don't like school. <laughs> and there are many very strange things when, when you involve time traveling that are weird. There are some plot inconsistencies. Yeah, it's not, you know, the greatest. Definitely not the greatest story. My favorite is Final Fantasy IX anyway, followed by six. And then I'm not sure anymore. I would have to replay them, I guess. I could do a breakdown from a writing perspective. I saw the first disc was great, but it fell off. If, yeah. Yeah, at some point, the, it just, it becomes so convoluted, honestly, and I've never been a fan of these uh, tough guy characters, which are really not tough. <laughs> it's kind of stereotypical. I really like uh, Zidane, or Zidane, uh, I think they call it J Zidane in Japan, something like that. Like Jidan, Japanese. Everything from the beach invasion to the train heist to the assassination was really fun. But then the academy is run by yellow. <laughs> yeah. The Supreme Org. Yeah, it becomes weird. Not only that, but again, the whole witches, succession of witches story. And, um, I don't know. Plus, there are a couple characters that I that I found extremely annoying, like Selfie. Selfie is so annoying. And the villain's motivation makes no sense, right? I wanted to, to compress time for some reason. Yeah, it's not very clear why. There are some speculations. Um, okay, if this is a spoiler alert, if anyone watching did not play the game, do not. Uh, listen to this or mute it for a second. <laughs> um, uh, some people say that Ultimicia is in fact Manoa that went back in time or something or couldn't save Squall. I don't know, something like that. There were some, as always, there were some uh, fan theories. But again, the whole thing doesn't make sense to me. Uh, it's. It's not a very good story, and it's there's too much uh, teen romance for me, especially now. I was less annoyed by it when I was younger. Now I'm very annoyed by it. Yeah, that was one of the common theories. Another was that Squall dies at the end of this one. Oh yeah, when he gets um, impaled by idea. And so the rest is a dream. Is it like lost? <laughs> His fever dream is he died. That reminds me of another game, Trusty Bell, also called Eternal Sonata in, in Europe. That was a nice game. Um, well, I mean, it was okay. It was not, there were some things I didn't like. I don't know if you played it. That's one of those fan theories you often hear. They're so annoying. <laughs> yeah, there is too much fandom around some games like Final Fantasy. I've never been too much into fan theories myself. I've never really, really written fan fictions. I was just drawing <laughs> all the time, so. And something that really always, it's always bothered me was the uh, Adil or Adel 
design, the giant witch. That was really unsettling <laughs> for me. He doesn't it, it it. I don't know, he she doesn't look like a witch. So why why doing that? I don't know, and then calling it witch? I understand speculation, but too many people try to make things sound deep and meaningful rather than accept the world the writer creates. Yeah, see, this is the problem. A lot of these games are targeted to adolescents and they did not really have a deep story. Or even a mature story um, that a person that's uh, 30 like I am now, 33, can relate too much. Uh, so all the Final Fantasies have pretty... I'm gonna get some fan hatred here, but the stories are pretty shallow like in general. They're not, you know, uh, best-selling novel type of stories. Um, and there's a lot of meaningless, like pretending to be meaningful content that's really not. So it's not really meaningful. That is what bothers me the most. While there are other games that are heavily underrated, like um, Lost Odyssey, I don't know if you played it, that's got some really interesting themes like fatherhood uh, and so on. That's still one of my favorite games, Lost Odyssey. It's a little more for a mature audience compared to Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> Which is still light. I mean, I think combat is... Oh, okay, apart from draw system, maybe. Uh, but it was pretty enjoyable, in general. Just, you know, just, just recognize it's got limits. So you do not put it in a pedestal and say, Hey, this is the best game ever created. This is the best thing ever created. <laughs> best in any book, movie, or song I've ever seen, heard. <laughs> So there are people who do that. That's a little too much for me. Hmm. Games often have shallow stories because the point is to have an interactive experience. So it's difficult to create something that fits every player experience, right? Yeah, that's true. I tend to gravitate towards games that have a, a, at least some more involved story, usually. Like I now played God of War, uh, the PS4 one, and I really liked it because I thought the story was great. I actually played it in story mode because I was I was mostly attracted by the story and the relationship between father and son. And mostly, I yeah, I do tend to not play games just for the gameplay alone. Recently, uh, yeah, back in the days maybe. Nowadays, I don't have as much time to play, so I want to be entertained like I'm I'm reading a book or watching a movie. So it's uh, much less about the gameplay, much more about the story for me. I tend to gravitate towards RPGs because they at least have some semblance of characterization and story, right? Yeah, when I discovered Final Fantasy when I was a teenager, that changed everything. I'm like, oh man, games can have a story? Wait a second. I had no idea. My problem is usually that story now now that I am older, uh, I got a family and stuff, it, I, I cannot relate with uh, teenage superheroes, basically. <laughs> That's why I also don't watch, not really watch anime anymore, because it feels kind of weird. Final Fantasy was mind-blowing if you grew up playing Android. <laughs> well, I grew up playing platforms mostly and... and beat em ups like Tekken and uh, platforms like Crash, Bandicoot, Spyro. Um, 
So, yeah, that was revolutionary. Although I had played Pokemon, but Pokemon doesn't have a story, basically. It's a pretextuous story of a young 10-year-old boy who ventures in the wild uh, and, and uh, gets into dog fights, basically, or chicken fights. <laughs> so that's not really a story. But Final Fantasy was great for me after, you know, over a decade of just playing simple games. I had my first console was the uh, Sega Genesis, so I was not used to playing story intense games. Right? I think you said Final Fantasy IX is your favorite earlier. That's mine too. Yeah, it's absolutely my favorite. Um, it's got that right balance between comedy and um, drama, and I think the the characters are really well done. Uh, very interesting. Very interesting motivations. And I like how it quickly it quickly escalates from oh let's kidnap the princess to there is this crazy pseudo doll <laughs> that went berserk and wants to destroy everything. <laughs> but I like I, I like pretty much everything about Final Fantasy IX, uh, the whole Vivi arc, mostly the Vivi arc. That's my favorite part, honestly, because it's it's it's. That is kind of deeper, you know, what is life, right? This is basically the question. It's the whole overarching theme, I guess, of Final Fantasy IX. It's about life and death. I agree. I think the game's exploration of life and death was really well done. Yeah. It was, uh, I mean, to be, a, for, for that being a game, again, uh, geared towards a younger audience, it was very well done. And it's fun, <laughs> honestly. Um, it's it's fun. Uh, there are some very nice character interactions. I like uh, Steiner. <laughs> Steiner is, is really fun. Um, he's very very goofy, and very um, relatable. Some people criticize the final boss, but I liked uh, I liked it for the symbolic value. I I liked it too. Um, I cannot find anything that I dislike intensely dislike about that game um i liked i actually everything i um after i played that game everything i wanted from a final boss was to be kind of interdimensional like that and the battle theme at the end was really kind of creepy they reprised that sort of theme uh in a musical sense in lost odyssey as well uh, but just just in terms of uh, music. But Final Fantasy IX, seriously, it is... Uh, I don't know, I have to play it again. It's been a long time. Definitely the one I replayed most. Probably four times, five. The, the critiques... I heard were, were mostly about, uh, at least when I was younger, um, the character design. But I think it fits. The only qualm is the steel system. Oh, I never really used steel. I mean, at the beginning, yeah, maybe a little bit, but I quickly dropped it. I am one of those people who rarely uses stuff like steel, uh, objects, uh, absorb like blue magic. <laughs> so, trying to make to make a better one for my game. Cool. Yeah, let me know when you have a demo, please. 
So I see my monsters in action. Okay. Let's keep some of these. You don't use blue magic. There is a blue mage in my game that you probably can't resist. Um, it's just that, at, I don't know, um, like with Queen in Final Fantasy IX, I think it was her, right? Yeah. Um, I am a very aggressive type of player. So I tend to attack a lot. <laughs> and I generally use direct hit attacks. Um, I would use combinations of Steiners and Vivi's, um, it was, what was it called Gladius? I don't know, I forgot. He's an opera singing frog. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you send over uh, the design by email if you have it already? That sounds fun. See, I don't, um, I don't like games that take themselves too seriously. If it's an RPG, I, I, I do like something like Final Fantasy IX. That's a little more free. So there are solid themes, but there is also that comedic relief at some point, right? I think it's important to strike a good balance in that. I can. I wish you would do a bus design for you. Um, I can try. I mean, it's not be that free turn. I can try that. My usual problem is just fine. <laughs> I'm slow. So... Hmm. I need a little more space up here. For some reason, the Twitch counter is not counting you. Because there is me, there is me again from another account, and then you. But it says two. <sighs> For some reason. I wonder how much off it is. Be someone else watching. Or lurking in the shadows. I wonder if it is it still legal if I if I stream playing Final Fantasy IX on an emulator, if I have the physical copy of the game, because I have it here. But uh, I'm not gonna wire up my PlayStation Two for that, and I don't have a, a DVD or CD drive on this computer, so the only way I can play it is really emulating a ROM. You play on the PS4 games? Yeah, me too. I do have a couple here, and some others, unfortunately, I've sold. That was stupid of me. But I still have all the Final Fantasy games. I also have a Japanese copy of Final Fantasy VII, although that's in Japan. I left it in Japan because I couldn't play it anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, I have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and two. And that's it, because then I start hating them. Oh, and wait, was it? Um, I think I might have. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Also, play Origins, all the. PlayStation and stuff because if I didn't have them. He actually got me into the whole Final Fantasy thing. We we're best friends at um at the time of the elementary school. And I was always going to his place and he had this game. It's like, oh, it's this game. That's amazing. And it was Final Fantasy VI. And I thought the graphics, like I was looking at the package, and he said, No, 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 the graphics is not like that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> but the game was awesome. 
Although I didn't figure it out until later. I remember um, really trying hard to draw summons and Esper I mean Esper's from Final Fantasy VI uh, back in the days. Especially during the sec the second I think it was yeah the second playthrough. Because they were pixels, obviously, so. Same, I underappreciated Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy VI when I was younger. Yeah, I was, uh, I guess... Uh, I think they had just bought the PlayStation 2. Or I just had... Well, I just received the PlayStation 2. I think I got it as a Christmas present. And so I was all like, oh, I want good-looking games. I inherited my brother's PS collection, so I still have this white label Final Fantasy VII. From when it released in 1997. Wow. That's rare and expensive nowadays. Although, if you go to one of these thrift stores, they're not even thrift stores. They're kind of like, they're called hard off. Uh, stores in Japan, they have all these old consoles and games for like near nothing, and they work. Well, I mean, they look like they could work because <laughs> I never really tested this Final Fantasy VII, but the label said it worked, and it was like three. It was the original one, like it was very old. This it's not Platinum Edition or Grace Hits, nothing. Um, so it's it was like two bucks. <laughs> I guess they don't care. I don't know. And so I got it right away. I'm like, okay. Well, I just want to have it. So I got it. New floating window. Something like this here, maybe? So the sale... This part is on the bottom. Um, wait, I did have... Let's see... How they treat scales and fins and sails and... Ground blue. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it was fish. Is it? Hmm. No, it doesn't seem transparent here. I've been playing Dragon Quest 1 and 2 on my Kindle, not sold on touchscreen control, but they're nice to have. Dragon Quest 2 still as brutal as I remember. I've never played uh, any Dragon Quest, I think I mentioned it last time, any Dragon Quest apart from a little bit of 7, finished 8, and 11. Um, because of that. Although I admit, I have to admit, uh, for me, for my crappy incapable gaming abilities even uh final fantasy V is pretty hard there's a lot of grinding to do uh i i tried replaying it um when was it last easter and i couldn't get past the um, canal uh like after you get the ship because i kept the those stupid octopi kept killing me and then there was a boss at the end even with the um the save the extra saves with the emulator uh it was i just couldn't do it so okay found it so that was a hit 
to my gamer pride. Dragon Quest is definition of grind. To, yeah, with Dragon Quest Eight, uh, it's I think at some point I use an um, what was it called? It was like action replay codes. Like I would swap the disc and insert another one to launch cheat codes and stuff because it was just taking too. Long. It was really killing me. That's why I cheated. And I grinded a lot. Yeah, I grinded a lot on that game. It was all for nothing. I, I had to grind for the very first boss too. The Bristol Call. Bristol Ball, Bristol Call. The uh, Geyser Monster. In the Waterfall. That was... Weird, because I was not used to that. And I had time in my hands. Nowadays, never do it. Although it looks like uh, 11 is a little easier. Yeah, the merman. Uh, voice acting was really nice though. That game had such a fun vibe overall. I don't want to have cast shadows here. Maybe a little here. There's a way here. Let's pretend the light is coming from this direction. It doesn't really have too much of a cast shadow. <laughs> coming from the top front. I don't want to cast a shadow over this. It's gonna look it's gonna be like the whole thing in shadows. Yeah, I scraped by that when he killed Yangus. So mad I missed out experience for that fight. Yeah, experience was old in that game. Yangus was so fun. A core blind. I, I would use I would do that all the that's actually how I learned English when I was younger. By just doing impressions of game characters and playing games in English. Especially Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy X, Metal Gear. A lot of Metal Gear impressions. A lot of Salt Snake and, and Ride impressions. See, this should probably fade a little bit. Let's do something like this. Probably. Hmm. But the thing that I usually find harder to swallow for me uh, with, with uh, Dragon Quest is the Akira Toriyama style, which I like for some things, but not for um, an RPG. I, I never even finished um, Burner Trigger because of that. <laughs> I don't know, for some reason it kind of screams too much Dragon Ball to me, and so I cannot really take it seriously. Too much. And I like Dragon Ball, but... Well, an RPG is different for me. I want a specific style for RPGs, let's say. I'm very... probably too... Um, specific in terms of... what I required, or what I like to have in an RPG. Um, I didn't even finish uh, Star Ocean, The Last Hope, for example, because of the music. Uh, and also the fact that he could not even ever say you. It was killing me. I would have to redo parts over and over just because I didn't have enough playtime 
you know, set time in the, for each session, so. That was okay, design-wise. But music-wise, uh, never really appreciated Star Ocean. Star Ocean 2 is one of my favorite games, big influence on me. I've never played it. The first one I played was Till the End of Time, uh, which was 3. Number 3, I believe. Um, and for that one, I really liked the character design back in the days at least then i played the last hope and that was it for me because i didn't have time but i heard that distortion distortion 2 is um is pretty good uh was it, it was still 2d right i believe it was Yeah, character sprites with some pre-render backgrounds, okay. Similar style to my game. Wait, so are you actually going for 3D or are you going to have pre-rendered stuff in there? Well, some of the environments in Star Ocean were 3D, like the world map, but my game is totally 3D, okay. Uh, so it's kind of like um, Xenogears? Because I don't know if the things that I saw about it are... Uh, you know, how it's going to be in the entirety, like throughout the whole game or just specific areas. Xenogears would be a good example. Cool. Usually the fear I have when um, using sprites and 3D is the sort of discrepancy between detail or in the detail between two, the two things. So it's a very fine line to walk. Like It's hard to strike the correct balance between uh, the 2D and the 3D part. It's difficult to design too, but I'm working on it. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. I have to admit, I'm a huge fan of pre-rendered backgrounds. Like, yeah, pre-rendered backgrounds. Um, I think just some of uh, the backgrounds for Final Fantasy IX, eight and nine, are just incredible. Like the um, uh, submarine research center, in Final Fantasy VIII, where you you, meet, you find Hamlet. Um, that was so cool. Also, because you can, from a designer standpoint, you can really push the atmosphere with a pre-rendered thing because you cannot move camera around. Something that uh, was similar to it was what they did in Lost Odyssey. 
So in Last Odyssey, they um, they kept the camera somewhat fixed, but not entirely. Kind of like Final Fantasy X, basically. And that was a good balance for me. Because I noticed that sometimes these games where you can just freely look around, they, they lack detail somewhere. And it's hard to find a um, designed viewpoint. Um, I make sketches of maps in advance for each area. Yeah, right. That sounds like a lot of work. Uh, I don't know if I asked you before or if you told me, but I forgot. Um, are you actually doing the music too? Like that um, special characters theme you sent me? I think the issues for games where you can freely look around is that they don't implement them well. Yeah. One of those games were uh, was uh, Blue Dragon <laughs> for me because I thought it really it was it felt so empty. If you use full camera, incorporate that into the gameplay. Yeah, yeah. I just don't use it for looking around. And that's it. I think it's still possible to achieve a, a decent level of um, immersion, even with the camera that moves around, like give the viewer a good impression of the overall background. I knew my own music, though I thought about it. I have a guy who has done some themes, but he's taking a break. Cool. So he's the one who made that theme. That's really good, by the way. I think it's really appropriate for the characters. <laughs> really appropriate. Want to make actual normal battle and boss music for me? Yeah, music is a huge part, plays a huge role in RPGs for me. Especially the, the main battle theme, obviously, because you hear that a lot over and over and over. So if it's not great, then probably not going to finish the game. That was basically, again, along with the length of the dungeons and the lack of save points, the reason why I, I didn't finish uh, The Last Hope, because the music was just too much. It was like not fitting for the environment it was played in. Like you had this very green scenery, very like calm, beautiful, and with the rock music. That's like, and it's not that I don't like that type of music, it's, just, it's not fitting. <laughs> so. That's one of the things Final Fantasy does well, uh, choosing the right music for the right music for the right place. Which is hard, obviously. I kind of wish Sakaguchi would make more games, but I guess he's out of business at this point. I don't think he's going to make anything anymore, apart from iOS stuff. Probably got tired of it, I can understand. On dungeons, I try to put a lot of thought into them. I hate modern RPG dungeons. Um, any example? 
of the ones you hate, I mean. I like the engines that make me use my brain, yeah. And I would add they're not excessively long. <laughs> and repetitive. And repetitive. Ah, oh, there was... Have you played... Um, what was that name? Uh, have you played... God. It's... Uh, I can't remember it. Uh, Bravely the Fall. Have you played it? The first one. Yeah, I think you said you, you played the, the second one, so I guess you played the first one too. Yeah, so um, I did not like the fact that it was basically the same dungeon repeated 16 times. <laughs> it was like four dungeons that were pretty much the same, to me at least. And then it was do it over again four times. Nah, I did it, but I did not enjoy it, <laughs> to say the least. I was about to just stop playing. I was just curious about the story, which was underwhelming for me. That's what I mean. They changed the wall design and such, but there's no real variance. Yeah, that that's a huge problem. That's why I, I said I really like the pre-rendered backgrounds, because even if you had dungeons uh, with those, with the exception of the uh, Minotaur dungeon in Final Fantasy VIII, that was repeat, that was a labyrinth, so it's fine. But in general, Final Fantasy always had, from the early ones on, well, maybe on the Pixel ones, but at least in the PS1 era ones, um, they had a pretty good variance in terms of dungeons and they were not boring for me the uh, we, we could call it dungeon I guess but the um, um, m m how is that called wait it's called memoria right in Final Fantasy 9 that was that's probably the best dungeon for me, like if I had to choose the best dungeon I've ever played in terms of especially atmosphere, uh, it's probably that Memoria or the, the Memory Place. Yeah, the Memory Place, I think it's actually called. I heard both. I don't know if it's translation thing. Yeah, the memory castle, yeah. Basically the end dungeon. Um, I really, really like that. Uh, especially the music. But there are lots of dungeons that are really nice in Final Fantasy. Even the Centra Ruins. Uh, that's kind of borderline for me in Final Fantasy VIII. I am thinking of finding a little time to play some RPG. I don't know if I want to play Chrono Cross. I'm thinking about it, uh, the remake. Though I do it, I do try with 3D objects. Oh yeah, it's it's hard uh, to recreate that with RPG Maker. And yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Obviously, for doing something like that, that that's not approachable as an indie game. There's too much design involved. Design and 3D. Too much. Sometimes my stylus doesn't draw. It's not like I'm one guy versus 
whole theme uh, team. Yeah, it's fart. I know because I tried making games do it. It's really hard. And I could only publish a single game. And the art, it was a pixel game, and the art took forever. Even if it's not much, it's just. I, I was supposed to make like 16 scenarios, I made two. Didn't sell anything. Because it took so long. So I totally understand that. Hmm. This, I'm gonna, uh, I, see, I think I'm gonna add some darkness later. Though you're technically on my team with monster designs. Yeah, that's true. So if you if you consider if I consider you, it's you, or me, and the music guy. And uh, is Samuel participating in the writing? So it's either three, four people. It's still on. This is the shadow. Samuel isn't doing anything, though I would like him to do play testing. I can do playtesting too, if you want. I think anything now, anyway. Although I'm very mean, so I don't know if you want that, actually. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like that either. That's probably going to become depressing very easy, having me as a playtester. <laughs> Someone's a big games guy. He has taught courses on it. Oh, really? Like on game design? Being mean is fine. I have thick skin. Cool. I'm gonna need it. <laughs> Now I need a little more here. And technically I forgot that little... There's a little piece of skin here that I forgot. Yeah, we can attach it here. It's like a sheet. Yeah, to the water. Let's see how I can mess it up. My other character. I got too much reference for this. With that, too much pressure, sensitivity. Let's, let's see. I do need something at the bottom. It's gonna be a little darker here, maybe. We're gonna add some generic stuff first and see how it looks. I 
Why anyone is going to think it's water anyway? Unless I make it blue. That's how you make water look like water, right? It's blue. Man, I've been carrying the comments on these last two streams. <laughs> Bob and Cheese, yeah. Ah, uh, where is Bob and Cheese? I don't know. Uh, cheese is... I gotta ask him. I think he goes... He takes walks this time. Bob, probably working. Sorry, there's too much pressure on you. It's okay, I mean, you know... <laughs> you don't need to if you're busy. It's fine. Also, because I'm very good at talking to myself. Very good. I do it all the time. That's what happens when you have no friends. Being an introvert, artist, mean person. Come on. I got some, some, um, follows. But this is a bit of a weird time for different time zones, I guess. So, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can do maybe some extra, or, I mean, uh, some extra streams or just do it at different time. It's just that uh, it's basically the only time slot I have when I'm reasonably not tired mentally. It's okay, I need to mentally take a break from work. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to do a six-hour stream, and you're going to co-host it. <laughs> it's weird. I'm only here so often because I work from PC. Same. Same. Um, I'm basically here all day, which ain't healthy. But, uh, you know, good eight. <laughs> so... Next thing you know, I'm going to stream while I am on a bike or something. And draw at the same time. Both my, of my jobs have to do with uh, stay into the computer the whole day or stay in the computer while you work. So unfortunately, there's no escape for me for now hey, If you ever want me to join the stream and chat I can you mean by voice I Can say I can try to set up um, I Just didn't offer because I thought it might distract from oh, no, it doesn't distract me at all um, I can set up I can try to set up a uh, discord I was trying the other day uh, for the other Italian gaming stream that I do uh, with, with my um, roommate here, but it was a little complicated, but it's not a problem. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it should be doable because it's just me doing this. Uh, I actually find it easier to talk rather than look up every time and, and read. So if it's easier for you, by all means, you can do that. Um, I can, I'm going to send you a link to the Discord, uh, which I'm still setting up, but it doesn't matter because you don't care, right? And I'll see if Cheese wants to join too sometimes, some days, if he's drawing, um, because we've been talking about it. He's just a very hard to get a hold of person, so it's, you never know when he is available. <laughs> He's just drawing all the time, and when he draws, he draws. And he's also shot, he says, but he's not. So if you're listening, Emperor, spooky Emperor of Cheese. Know that I am thinking that. Huh. 
Hmm. I think it's actually better for the audience too if there is more than one person talking. Because there is a lot more room for um, a discussion. It's a little more entertaining to watch. On another note, I also thought I could start doing um, some interviews of some friends maybe to start with uh, that are also artists and publish them on YouTube. We'll see. Streaming by yourself can be pretty miserable. Yeah, sometimes it is. Nobody comes, it kind of is, but I mean, it's, it's kind of how it works. Oh, when you're starting out. Just wait until I get 30,000 followers. Next week. I think this is watery enough. It's not looking bad. This kind of looks like water. I am pleased. Hmm. I try to have things to talk about, but there is only some, yeah, so much. It's hard when, especially when there's nobody watching, like not, not just chatting, but watching. Hmm. It's doable, but it requires effort. Most of the streams that I see are um, silent. The vast majority are silent. Especially art streams. Remember to um, let me know when you do stream. Because if it's if it's a day I am free, I'm definitely gonna join. My favorite stream was when I forgot to save before quitting, and a guy in the chat roasted me. Oh. Well, did you actually quit, or did he? Save your butt. I backed out to the main menu before setting. What game was it? That's miserable. I hate redoing things. One reason why autosaving is got sent for me. Oh, for me too. Uh, I am one of those people who saves at least twice every time because as soon as I save, I ask myself, did I actually save? I, I, I always did it. As far as I remember. And I'm so thankful for autosave nowadays. What did I do here? Why did I do that? This is this is wrong. This is not <laughs> This is not seaweed. What did I what was I thinking? I guess it was too zoomed in and see what it was. The game was Yu-Gi-Oh! for me. Oh, I wanted to play that when I was a kid. Well, kid, not a kid, teenager. I so badly wanted that game, but Steam didn't exist yet. Also because I had nobody to play with, so... The game, uh, I threw away like three hour stream. It's on our YouTube. Can you uh, link it? Can you send links, by the way? I don't know if you can send links here, but try. Give it a try. Just just in a, a link. I'm gonna go and uh, see it later. Are you streaming today, by the way? Later? Because today uh, it's it's Monday, right? Yeah, it's Monday, so I am free, so I can I can watch it uh, while I work on your monster. If you stream. Probably not. I'll be there from work. Okay, cool. No worries.
maybe tomorrow. Ah, I, don't, I can't tomorrow. I, I have this, uh, this other, uh, oh, it's, it, it's actually, I'm actually going to draw tomorrow on the, uh, on that stream, but it's a, it's an Italian channel. Cool. Okay. Everyone watching. Go there. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go there later. Finish this. Streaming and cooking dinner. Yeah. I mean I can see it. I don't know if other people can see it, but I can. I tried to send a link the other day and it didn't show up. You know, weird. I don't know, it didn't change any setting. Like for um, moderation. Okay, thank you. Bubbly, bubbly water. Oh, maybe that was... Yeah, I think YouTube does um, ban or prevent you from sending links. I also had to increase security a little bit because I was getting spam on um, the VOD, so probably also because of that. Yeah. Like this, bubbly water. Hmm. Once you get a hold of stream elements, I'm going to have some stuff. Um, uh, this guy, I, uh, I joined the stream of. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII. He he has this cool feature that you can actually like by chatting you when you chat you earn points and when you have enough points you can summon a creature like a Final Fantasy summon. That's pretty cool and just comes on screen and does the animation. He did it all manually. That's a lot of work. Getting spam on the VOD means you're on your way to the top. Yeah, or the bottom. <laughs> also, we'll see. No, I'm not getting as many impressions as I hope I would get. I hoped I would get. This is why I want a little more. I'm super happy with how this looks. Like that splash there. But this part is okay. This part is okay. It kind of looks like water already without being blue. It's incredible. It's not even blue. It already looks like water. It's magic. Yes. Oh, that's one. Yeah. Better. It's rough when you're starting out, you'll get there with consistency. Yeah, yeah, I know. And YouTube is mostly for VOD anyway, it's not for streaming, so I don't really get mad about that. As for Twitch, um, since I'm not drawing naked anime girls, that's probably why I don't get followers easy. And I am not. So I am not a half-naked anime girl. <laughs> and I did not draw half-naked anime girls. Or completely naked. So that explains everything. <laughs> um, I actually look for people that draw creatures and stuff. There is nobody, at least when I can 
you know, check. There's literally nobody. <laughs> That's pretty depressing. 90% of the streams are anime girls or not safe for work stuff. That's too bad. But I think the, the, the medium is cool. It's just not used for a lot of stuff from them. I, I understand that it's what sells, let's say. So. Anime and Mermaid coming up for the views. Mm, it's gonna be a merman, I guess. <laughs> it's probably gonna get some views too. But for other reasons, it's not gonna look like a person though. It's gonna be humanoid, but not human. Because I don't like furry type of stuff, furry type of monsters. <laughs> So it's gonna look like a monster, not like a some um, enticing strange merman with the head of a fish. I think you should make it short and roundish. Yeah, that's my plan. Kind of. Oh, I actually. Um. Okay, I'm gonna take a photo. Wait, do I have it here? I'm gonna see if I have my sketchbook here because I did draw that monster once. Uh, just a sketch. I hope I have it or, or a photo of it. Man, I so hope I do because I can start with that if so. It was not too bad. But yeah, that's what they mostly look for on the internet anyway. <laughs> so uh, today I was working on some SEO for a website and I actually use the same tool to figure out keywords um, to use for my videos, right? So when I when I was doing doing the horse anatomy once, I was looking for okay, what keywords might people look for if they want to draw a horse? And you can probably guess what the number today was number five, but it was number three last week or two weeks ago. Uh, word or keyword is when looking for horses. It's so appalling. I have no words, but I guess it's internet and that's how it works. That's actually very creepy. You know that some people actually look for that to physically see they actually look for that. You might speculate, but they actually do. And it's a lot of people. It was 73,000 only in the United States. In a week, probably. I don't know if it's monthly or weekly, but Leslie could tell me if he's online. He just drop in and tell me if it's weekly or, or monthly in Samrush. That was creepy to see. And also sad. <laughs> because I know that doing stuff that's actually safe for work, I'm probably not gonna get a, as many views as other people get, but it's fine. We almost done with the first layer. So I'm probably going to stop here. I'll see if it's, yeah, I might actually do the second one off camera. I don't know yet. Anyway, it's looking good. So yeah, it's not too bad so far, I think. All right. You always think it's a joke until you realize that they are really into it. They really are. They really are. Not just the generic thing, but also specific parts, apparently. <laughs> Which is weird. I guess that's the world nowadays. Anyway, uh, I'm going to stop here. Um, I will see. Uh, I might do a couple layers. And I don't know if I want... Okay, no. I will continue this tomorrow and then eventually... Uh, finish the grayscale off screen and then go to the color directly. I actually, I'm noticing now because I'm looking at it zoomed out that there are some things like some muscles that need adjustment. So I might do that uh, probably this evening. We'll see. Anyway, um, Chase, I'm sending you the Discord link. Uh, it's going to stay kind of private until I figure out how to set up properly. 
and then uh, we can open up to other people as well. But for now, uh, thank you, Chase, for joining. Thanks, everyone else who watched. I am going to see you tomorrow at the same time. Cheers.